grant us grace and while i just prayed and meditated on um, the things that i'll be sharing it was very strong in my heart to begin um, this session tonight with a call to salvation for as long as i am alive for as long as this ministry remains our priority under god will be to see that souls come into the kingdom in order of priority greater than healing greater than signs and wonders greater than any and all manifestations is that we have a harvest of souls let me tell you something about jesus number one he is god number two the Bible declares that he came to the earth as a representation of the Father's love. John chapter 3 and verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. That means whosoever does not believe in him will perish. The Bible says so already, that he that does not believe is already condemned. Hallelujah. And so it says, but whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Verse 17 says, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Take note, the world through him might be saved, not through opinions, through him. The Bible says there is no other name under heaven that is given unto man by which we must be saved. As we begin to draw the curtain expecting the return of Jesus, it is important that we become more intentional and emphatic as to the harvest, the salvation of souls. When we gather like this, it is impossible that in this crowd of people inside and outside, there would be no people who are in need of Jesus. He sends them by himself. The Bible only mandates that we pray he says the harvest is wide, but the laborers are few. And he says, pray the Lord of the harvest that he would send laborers. And so it's important to begin tonight with a call. There are several people who are yet to make definite decisions as far as submitting to the Lordship of Jesus is concerned. Now listen very carefully. What does it mean to be saved? It doesn't mean to walk out here and cry recite a chant and go back it is very possible that you can do all that and yet you are not saved the matter of salvation is not about coming forward or remaining or reciting something you were told to recite are we together now according to scripture there are two major components that must be involved in genuine salvation number one that the message of salvation must be articulately communicated you cannot give your life to nothing. If you believe in Jesus as a friend, you are not wrong, but you are not saved by that declaration, that belief. If you believe in Jesus as a prophet, an apostle, you believe in Jesus as God, that does not save you. There is an exact information about Jesus you must believe that translates to salvation. Are we together? Paul preached that message intelligently on the day of Pentecost. He said, let it be known to you that this same Jesus that you have crucified has today been exalted as Lord and Christ. It matters what you believe about Jesus. When it has to do, listen carefully, when it has to do with salvation, you must believe, listen carefully, you must believe and admit your current state that you are unable to help yourself and that by the righteousness of the law and the righteousness that comes through yourself and through your works, you are unable to be saved. Salvation only comes through faith that is in Christ. Are we together? The Bible does tell us that our righteousness, the best of us is as filthy rags. There's no point for argument. And then the Bible also declares that the wages of sin is death. As simple as that. That the soul that sins will die. And by that verdict, 
all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Are we together? So Jesus now comes as a mediator. He comes as an expression of the Father's love that since you are unable to meet the righteous standards of God, I have come in covenant to receive of your nature of sin and to pay the due price, the due penalty for sin. And Isaiah the prophet was speaking and said, he shall see the travail of his soul. Jesus did not come to die for himself. No. Jesus did not come to die for a few people. For in Paul's message on the day of Pentecost, he said, men and brethren, what shall we do? And, and Peter replied, he said, repent for the remission of your sins and you shall receive this promise. He says, for the promise is unto you and unto your children, even as many as are far off, they that the Lord himself will call. So when it has to do with salvation, it is for everyone. But you must believe in the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus, that Jesus came, became sin, became a man, and he died in exchange to purchase redemption for you. Are we together? That when you believe in Jesus Christ with your heart, according to Romans chapter 10, reading from verse 9 and 10, that if you believe with your heart the Lord Jesus Christ and you confess with your mouth his lordship, you shall be saved. And the law is in verse 10. It says, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Verse 13 says, neither... Um, is there, he said, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord, he shall be saved. There is no salvation in any other. Now, the beautiful thing about salvation is that God still respects your will, your ability to choose. That means as an act of your will and your volition consciously, you can listen to this message and say, Jesus, I choose as an act of my will to reject you, meaning I reject your life, meaning I reject your Holy Spirit, meaning I reject the potential for dominion, meaning I reject eternal security and redemption, meaning I reject everything that is God. Rejecting Jesus is a public declaration of your eternal fraternity with Satan. The moment you reject Jesus consciously, Satan no longer becomes an illegal person in your life. To reject Jesus is automatically to embrace Satan. To embrace all the causes, the woes, and all the things that plague our world today. Submitting your heart and your life to Jesus is more than becoming a Christian. It's more than the religiosity of coming into a faith practice that acknowledge Jesus as Lord. It is a relationship. He says, behold, I stand at the door of your heart and I knock. This is the only faith practice I know of that thrives on relationship, not just rituals. Although he is God, you can know him this is eternal life, John 17 and verse 3, that they may know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. And we are mandated by God to go and preach, he says, to preach the gospel to all creation. What is the gospel? The good news. A holistic capture of all that Jesus has done as proof of the Father's love. Now, you can reject Jesus whilst you are listening to me, whether online or on site. I will painfully respect your will, however, to your detriment. But Jesus is giving someone a chance right now. You probably were invited for the first time. You are somewhere scattered within, outside. Or for someone, you've heard these teachings and these messages again and again, but you are yet to make up your mind. The Bible says today, if you hear his voice, you can hear his voice and assume he's not speaking to me. Apostle, I came to be healed. Talk about healing. Apostle, I came because I'm tired of poverty. I came to access the grace for favor. Indeed, you will find it because this is the house of God. But can I tell you, if you come to my house and eat my food, sleep on my bed, use my restroom and ignore me and walk away, you cannot call me friend. He desires a relationship. You can come and receive of the fringe benefits of redemption. But more than the things that he will give you, he's presenting to you tonight the gift of himself. 
the greatest gift that can be given himself with his life coming alongside his wisdom his power and you may say apostle you don't know who is sitting and listening to you you don't know the story of my life i've done everything evil to be done jesus extends his love even for people like you for while he walked upon the earth he said those that are without sickness do not need a physician now that you have acknowledged that you need his help he can come to you as the savior even the physician it's the savior he can move your mountain my god is mighty to save he is mighty to save forever the author of salvation he rose and conquered the grave jesus conquered 